Yo, what's good, guys? Boundless is out. So you already know I spent the last 40 hours, 30, something like Triff, man. I don't even know, bro. 20, 30, 40. I spent however the hell out long that was working on a great bench zone list. We got multiple, multiple lists coming for you guys. But this is the most generic, generic, most basic four or five negates every single turn using the utilizing the new cards to destroy Altergeist Striker and really destroy the meta. I tailored this build to destroy, like, no, no, uh, gimmicky stuff just to really destroy the meta to ensure any single turn uh, is going to end up on uh you'll see the extra deck it's like all the spell trap negates like Naruto, vortex uh boral savage you really use like utilizing boral savage typically boral savage and vortex with two fog blades so you always want two spell trap negates always plus the two fog blades and it's every single turn does it and i took out so many cards that stop with the, uh, that don't, don't like consistently go through a small deck, 45 instead of 60. Lots of draw cards in here as well to ensure you draw the side cards. And I'll show you guys greatness. Uh, before we get started, do check out this playmat. Uh, new playmat for Trip Gaming. Link in the description below. Awesome. Help support the channel. And shout out to my sponsor, Game Nation. Why do you want to He's paying up 5% off. Let's get straight to the video, boys. Don't forget to subscribe as well. We got three Wisdoms, three Harmo, one of each of these. We do play Desires, but... Uh, you I need mean, one of each of these if you banish them, it's irrelevant, who cares, you're gonna want to try and go into them anyways before. And with Boral Savage, you need to play Wisdom Eyes, man. You have to play Wisdom Eyes before regardless, but now, what else, you don't want to play Garbage Pearl Poison and the Black Fangs, they truly suck. I know you play Pen Calls, but Wisdom Eyes are like 9 Pen Calls, they're 9 cards that say you're gonna have skills regardless of what your opponent does. So, you want to ensure that, because Wisdoms are what saves you games uh, through Electrum getting hand trap, etc, etc. But this is the correct Magician count. The only thing that's debatable is uh, one more magician of your choice of either Black Fang or Janky. One of them, and maybe you could play 11. But do not play less than this uh, if you're playing, as long as you don't play a really small count. Do not play more than 11. Playing more than 11 is absolutely stupid. Like, you don't want to see too many magicians. Uh, but that's a perfect magician count. Now, we changed something in the turbo cards big time. We took out Magical Abductor. Magical Abductor is, even though we play literally, literally 18 spells in here, 16 or something like that. Uh, well, 22 of these. If you draw, you gotta draw two spells for Abductor to be a turbo card. And even then, uh, it's almost like three spells. Because if you, like, let's say you upstart a lore. And then you have two spells. If you activate a third spell to get the, the counter, uh, what card is going to get you a turbo card? So Abductor is not that great of a turbo card. It's more of a, a win more card. But we play one Abductor because a lot of times when you draw a bunch of draw cards, big electric before your pen summon, uh, you send the Abductor, you add the Abductor, and then you literally just uh, do this line, pen calls, activate, get a free plus one. So one's all that's required to have it accessible with Electrum. But you do not need more than that because it's not so much a turbo card. It's a pseudo turbo card. One is the best. Uh, we'll save that for later. These are the nine real turbo cards. And uh, three Dark Worm. You want it because a small deck, six Pendulum Calls, obviously. Uh, now we got random one ofs so uh, the one abductor that I talked about, you're going to be searching a lot. You need to play one, man, 100%. Uh, don't play three, but play one because so many times you're going to have Dueless Alliance or an uh, Upstar Goblin or an Allure that you just don't need to activate. You simply just add a... Uh, sometimes you don't need to set, you, like, add an Electrum. You don't need Electrum's effect. Uh, just add the abductor, you get a free plus. And then the one gets zero. Oh, sorry. I should take off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're 45. But I get Allure because Allure, like, you go through two cards, right? So it's way better than that. But, uh... One of each of these mythical beasts. But Shilisk is nice because it gives Cerberus the option of being either a Jackal or Upstar Goblin. And when after you side deck, and if I'll show you guys the side deck, what really separates this deck uh, compared to the past decks I've made is the side deck obliterates the meta. And I know people say, oh, my side deck wins. I side three to Twister. But the Twister doesn't actually do anything. It just pops two other four back row, right? But the back row, the back row hate that's in here are cards like Reboot, Danko, Hatrunade. Hey, Cards that if you activate against Striker or against Altergeist, you auto win. And because you play three Desires, three Allure, and four Upstar Goblins, and Cerberus, and Bashilis, you're always going to be drawing it. So you play six of each, you know, like there's six cards that are auto wins if you draw. Uh, so that's why you need to play the Bashilis, to ensure you draw it, right? And the one Jackal. And a cool thing with Bashilis is if you were to draw one Cerberus, one Jackal, one Cerberus, one Bashilis, you'll use Cerberus to search the other. And then you'll uh, activate Bashilis to put Cerberus back, draw one. Then Jackal to special the Bashilisk, and then if you activate one spell card, you get back the Jackal to your hand, because you'll play two, uh, two scales, three counters, and you get a free plus one from it. So Bashilisk is actually a fantastic card.
Helps you see side cards and uh, gives you a free plus one. And uh, if you banish it with desires, who cares? Because the if you have ten upstar goblins, you want to ensure you see the side card. Because going going first, you put up four negates easily, like absolutely easily. And uh, we don't play Mermaid just strudel because it's just sometimes they brick you. There's no reason for them to be honest. And uh, this going second, you just draw those side cards because you you draw into it. You don't have to draw it in your opening five. You draw into it as you go, right? There's so many draw cards. You draw into it as you go, and you draw one of them, you auto win. So next, we do play one Boots Double Fog Blade. If we were to draw one of these engine, we abandon the Rusty engine and just keep that one trap. So if we draw one of these three in the opening, let's say you desire is banish one of these, it's totally fine. Uh, you just abandon the engine afterwards. You have so many engines in here that if you banish a one of you banish something, who cares? You just go a different route. Trying two is too nice not to play, unless you play like literally 15 one ofs that are absolutely necessary. But uh, like, I get, like I said, if you draw one Boots, you simply pen summon it, and uh, only one abductor, everything else is scale two or lower. So you just pen summon it and then link it away and get the free fog blade. If you draw a fog blade, you get a free fog blade and don't go for rusty after afterwards and you just go for different negates. So you still go for negates regardless. If you draw this, it just even makes your play a little easier. So it doesn't break. Uh, one foolish, three shrine. Uh, 45 is fine, good ratio. But in 40, I would suggest maybe cut one out. And then uh, three pen call, three duelist lines. Even with the Wisdom Eye, it doesn't matter. You always want to see Pendulums. Uh, you want Magicians in there all, all the time. And with uh, uh, Sky Strikers, Alter Guys going at rampant, you want to have access to Pen Call, especially Alter Guys. Uh, pen Call to get Dragon Pit to ensure you pop the rivalry or whatever they're going to have. So having Pen Call is absolutely necessary. And six is like beautiful. I would never play less than that. It's just such a great card. Sometimes you do, let's say you draw three of them sometimes. That's totally fine. Because if you end up with a Turbo card, you still end up at four negates, even if you have two dead cards in your hand. And then three Allure and three Desires. Uh, it's a 45 card deck, but these draw two. Uh, I know you banish one, but it says draw two. And you're going to draw your, your side cards going second. And uh, it's extremely important to draw your side cards. Like, you're going to see, I'm going to go straight to the side before I go extra deck. Like, it's the huge part of the deck. This is why I truly think Pendulums are the best deck this format. Because if you face Alter Geist, you face Alter Geist, you go triple Denko, triple Reboot, draw one of them in your 10 upstart deck with Allures and, up, and Desires almost kind of as double upstarts. Because you draw two cards. I know you banish a bunch. You uh, banish a card in hand, whatever. But it kind of got a double upstarts. Because it's kind of like you're, you're playing with, with uh, six, uh, six plus 12 cards gone, four upstarts, and 16 cards. So 45 is a 29 card deck. So you're playing a 29 card deck, and you're you're going to assign six of these. And if you draw multiple, you just discard a pen call. So it's too nice, and it's just a free auto win. Then against Sky Strikers, you simply take out the reboots and play true nades. So it's the exact same thing. And then going second, you draw one of these six in your 29 card deck, uh, and then you win. If you draw multiple, you pen, discard a pen call. You pen five, you win. You just, oh, like, electrum, one electrum equals Boral Sword. So it's such an easy way to win. And if you can't uh, OTK through one hand trap, you're, you're just playing the deck completely wrong. And these obliterate everything right now going second. With all those draw cards, draw some of these, you win. Draw one. And now against the other relevant decks, there's a Pendulum and, and uh, Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragons are not going to be playing uh, with Dangers anymore because the whole point of Dangers was Snow. But now without that, they're just going to be playing Double Colossus if they're lucky and maybe a third Titan, Summon Sword, etc, etc. Then you simply drop these bad boys on them and they literally can't do anything. You just like OTK or set up a board and then they can't do anything. No more hand traps, eh? No more hand traps. After drawing four against Tayfun, I was like, hand traps are garbage. You're absolutely shit. I hate hand traps with a passion. Veil is garbage. And now uh, you could draw four Veilers by signing 10 cards because you need to see them. You need to see, the, to see them, right? Or, or, <laughs> or you could uh, put cards like these where you have an option to draw into it. So you have the sixth card to draw into. You have draw cards to draw them. Electrum draw. Like you have so many draws that you're uh, going to end up drawing one of these auto win cards. And these are auto win cards. They're not a Veiler that stops a little thing. These are all like win you the game uh, in the certain magic that you signed them for. And then, like, True Draco, which might be a thing now as well. You still got Reboots, Dankos, True Needs. Like, they, this overall thing just obliterates everything, I think. This is the best side deck. I think this is a side deck that most people are going to play anyways, regardless of what deck you play. But if you do these with a deck that draw, 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 you're always going to see it. So it's like you auto-win. And it's even budget for you budget players, right? Like, this deck's super budget right now still. Even, you don't even need to play the Mythical Beast. Like, you don't even need to play the Mythical Beast. If you think Jack is expensive, you can take it out. Like, Mythical Beasts are not even necessary. Uh, they're just there for fun. Like, they're not that great. 
to be honest, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Next, Electrum Underclock Rusty. You still go Boil Savage, Vortex, and Double Fog Blade. Multiple cards in hand, call it a day. So you still need to play this engine. We don't play Yazi, but these are just the generic best utility cards in there, especially with uh, the it being a control format, which is so good for Pendulum, because Pendulum are by far the best combo deck this format. So uh, it's the only deck that actually does stuff. You you cut the Zephyr engine. The Zephyr yeah, I cut it out because it's garbage. Uh, it bricked so many times with me, and you don't want to, like, the PKs don't brick, because if you draw them, they're a one-card negate by itself. The Divine Strike is not. You're going to draw Divine Strike multiple times. The Zephyr monster does not count as a Pendulum monster, because you can't Pendulum summon with it in scale. So it's kind of just like a, in the sense, like a field spell in the sense. Like, you can't Pendulum summon with it. Uh, that's why I don't like the mid legal beast either, because they don't, to me, count as Pendulum either, because they're scale four. So drawing them bricks too much. Drawing the, uh, the PKs don't brick. That's why I cut down the Jackal to one. Yeah, I, I cut Jackal to one, and Bishop to one just because I like, could upstart. Like, if I couldn't have the option to upstart, I think I'm actually taking out the Mythical Beast engine. Because it gives you the, a Serpent gives you now the option of upstart Goblin or Jackal. Like, like a free a turbo or an upstart Goblin. Which, the whole point of this deck is drawn to your side cards going second. You know what I mean? So yeah. going first, put a 40 gates. Going second, you draw to your side cards with little draw cards in the deck. And then you just win. Because after that, you OTK the shit out of them. And then uh, these Borals just easily help OTK. You are at a big disadvantage not playing these Boral cards. So even if you are in a budget, you can take out the Unicorn. Try and get these. Like, at least Boral for sure. But try and get Boral Sword if you can. Helps a lot with OTKs. It's crazy. Next, uh, Dark Rebellion, Tornado again. Tornado's only rank 4. These are like, only rank 4 Interruption. You don't need Dweller. Like, what are you going to play Dweller for? Uh, this extra deck isn't super tight, but there's no reason for Dweller. And Dark Rebellion helps so much with OTKs. And never, don't forget what, what it does with Rusty. So, uh, they just overall, this should be every single Pendulum player's extra deck right now so far. And then, uh, because we're going double Fog Blade, uh, we want to protect it with Spell Trap Negates. The only reason you played Zephyr before is for a Spell Trap Negate, but if you just uh, check your levels as you pen summon properly, then you're going to have two Spell Trap Negates anyway. So, we play one of every single one of them. And now, uh, this is a proxy just because I don't have it yet. Boral Savage. So this is Boral Savage, which just was Void Ogre. We're going to take that out. This is Boral Savage. So now you're going to have... So nobody pulled it today. Yeah, no one pulled it. It was insane. And the people that did just dipped ASAP. So uh, rank 6, rank 7, Synchro 8, Synchro 8. So syn Synchro 7, Synchro 8, my bad. So rank 6, rank 7, Synchro 7, Synchro 8. So you're always going to have two of these plus the two Fog Blade. If you're playing a deck like Alter Geist, is, or, yeah, Alter Geist, you might want to substitute one of these with Tornado Dragon. But Tornado Dragon is so nice in this format because there's so many back row decks that you can't just take it out. And you always end up on two Fog Blade and two of these. This is being Boral Savage. And then lastly, I, I was left with one extra slot and I was debating putting Mare Mare in the deck, but there's really no need for it whatsoever. So for this, I just put the generic utility card with, with now the deck having a big emphasis on going into Harmonizing to ensure you get most use out of Boral Savage. We put Ignister back in. Just because you always go, you have you always try and go into Boral Savage, so you always have access to the harmonizing. So many pen calls, Oath Dragon always in scale to add back to harmonizing. So for next turn, just a fantastic card just to help OTK even more. So that is the deck. Um, now I'm gonna in a different video show you guys like the combos with it. But Boral Savage uh, is a whole other ball game now because harmonizing equals Boral Savage versus to negate anything. So now you end up with Vortex and Savage and double fog blade so that's an auto win against 99 percent of decks you need to open the absolute stones to get over that and they still won't and then you just ultk in the next turn and this the uh, with the side deck as well going first or going second is an absolute obliteration like even if let's say you lose a die roll let's you lose a die roll against alter guys they go secret village whatever you lose game two goes around you go first 40 gates they can't play even through hand traps 40 gates and they still can't play game three comes around you side in the reboots, the Denkos, and you draw into it because you're playing 10 cards as they draw. And then when they activate spoofing, you reboot them, and you simply just OTK. And it's the same for uh, Strikers with Hey Trunade and Denkos. Uh, same thing for Pendulum with Triple Sphere, Triple Lava Golem. Then with Thunder Dragon, Triple Sphere, Triple Lava Golem. You just keep drawing into these type of cards and auto win. You don't just go one Veiler and or two Veiler and doesn't even stop their turn. He's got auto win. So that is the profile, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the uh, combo tutorial, which we'll be showing soon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.